Okay, you got done with that handout with all those X's, and we did that handout for a reason. It's to start learning how to factor trinomials. Well, the leading coefficient is not 1 by using the AC method. I like to use the AC method when the leading coefficient of a trinomial is not 1. In these examples here, I have 8, 6, 6, and 20 as my leading coefficient. None of those are 1. If any of those had been 1, I would have done the trial and error method I showed you um, in part 2, or in part 1. So now I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the AC method to factor the trinomial. Before I do that in this first example, whenever you're factoring, remember you always look for a GCF. In this case, there is no GCF. 8, negative 10, and negative 3 don't have a number in common and they all don't have x's in common, so I have no GCF. Now I'm going to look at um, using the AC method, using the x's that we had on the handout, and you're going to fill in a number here and here based on your trinomial. So look at this uh, trinomial, and A is actually this 8 here, and C is this negative 3 here. A times C is going to be your number up here. So 8 times negative 3 is going to be negative 24. And your B value comes down here in the bottom. So you have to fill those two numbers based on the A, C, and B in your trinomial. Now you're going to go ahead and fill in the other parts of this X like we did in the handout. The 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. Look like the only combinations I can use are 2 and 12, 4 and 6 to give me the negative uh, 10 or 10 possibilities. So 2 and 12 and 4 and 6. Only way 2 and 12 will work is if I made the 12 negative because 2 times negative 12 does add to give me negative 10. If I made a second possibility work, they would both have to be negative for it to add up to negative 10. But this does not multiply to give you the negative 24. This one does. Okay, so 2 and negative 12 are the numbers I want to use. So now that you know 2 and negative 12 are the numbers that fill in that x, you're going to use those numbers to rewrite these three terms into four new terms. To do that, you're going to take the first term ax squared, and keep that, and bring down the minus 3. Now we're going to rewrite the negative 10x mm -hmm. as plus 2x minus 12x. Now you have four terms, 8x squared plus 2x minus 12x minus 3, and you go ahead and do factor by grouping. First two terms I can pull on x, 2x, I mean, and I get 4x plus 1, pull the minus sign, in between 12 and 3 I can pull out a 3, no x's, I have 4x plus 1, and my two factors are 4x1 and 2x minus 3. So now I come across a, um, a thing that a lot of students will ask me, and they say, um, these students will ask me, 2 and negative 12 are the numbers that you use, would it be wrong if I had done negative 12 and 2? And the answer is no, because these two numbers still add up to the negative 10, still multiply to give you the negative 24. But if you had gone that route, the only difference is you would now have 8x squared minus 12x plus 2x minus 3. Let me give myself more room here. So plus 2x minus 3, and so you still do grouping, and I have 4x, 2x minus 3. In between the last two terms, you can only pull out a positive 1, so I have 2x minus 3. And my two factors are 2x minus 3 and 4x plus 1. And you're going to notice that these are the same answer, or these same factors as I had over here. And remember, multiplication doesn't matter 
what order you multiply your factors. So it's the same answer. Um, if you switch the order of these two numbers, you'll still get the same two factors, just in different order. Now, how do you know your, if your answer is correct or not correct? You can always check your work. Okay, so we know both of these answers are the same. So let me go ahead and check the one here on the right hand side. If I FOIL this out, I get 8x squared plus 2x minus 12x minus 3. And if I add like terms in the middle, I get minus 10x minus 3. So 8x squared minus 10x minus 3. And that's the same thing that you have right here. So you know your factors are correct. So again, I did these two different ways. You don't have to do one of them. Okay. Let's do another example. So here I have 6x squared plus 19x, 19x minus 7. There's no GCF. Okay, so here I have negative 42 and 19. 1 and 42, 2 and 21, 3 and 14. 6 and 7. So it looks like the only pair I'm going to use is 2 and 21. So 2 and 21. The only way that would add up 2 19 to make a 2 negative. So it gives me 19 when I add them together and negative 42 when I multiply them together. So I get 6x squared minus 2x plus 21x minus 7. These two numbers come from here. And so we wrote 19x as minus 2x plus 21x. Yep. So I group. First two terms I can pull out a 2 and an x. So I have 3x minus 1. I pull out a plus sign. And between 21 and 7, I pull out 7. 3x minus 1. 3x minus 1 and 2x plus 7. And you can check by FOIL. And to save us a lot of time, I'm not going to go ahead and check by FOIL, but if you were to FOIL these two factors out, you'll get this right back. Okay, next problem, um, there's no GCF again. I'm saying no GCF pretty quickly, but realize again, 6, negative 17, 12 don't have a number in common other than 1, and not all the terms have X's in them, so there's no GCF. Okay, I have 72, so 6 times 12 is 72, and my b is negative 17. 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24, 4 and 18, 8 and 9. So it looks like 8 and 9, um, the only combination I can, can try out. So 8 and 9. And the only way that I ever add up to negative 17 is to make both of them negative. So they add up to negative 17 and multiply to give you 72. And I have 6x squared minus 8x minus 9x plus 12. Okay. For the first two terms, I'm going to pull out a 2x, 3x minus 4. Pull the minus sign because of the minus sign right here. And 9 and 12, I have 3 in common. Now I have 3x minus 4. I could have negative times a negative is that positive right there. So my factors are 3x minus 4 and 2x minus 3. Okay? Check my foil. I definitely recommend checking these by FOIL if you don't think your answer is right or you have time on the test. Um, and really mentally, if you can mentally check it quickly, this times this gives me that. This times this gives me negative 9x and a negative 8x, which is negative 17x. And last times last is 12. So there's a mental check right there. Okay. And the next problem, um, there's no GCF. So I have negative 160 and 27. 1 and 160, 2 and 80. 4 and 40. 
5 and 32. It looks like 5 and 32 is going to be a possibility. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here and do 5 and 32. Now, if 5 and 32 don't work, then keep on going down the list. Find other pairs because remember we talked about that in um, part 2 of the, um, the video. Is you want to make sure you exhaust all possibilities. So if 5 and 32 don't work, then we go ahead and keep going. In this case, 5 and 32 do work. They add up to 27. I'm going to make the 5 negative and multiply to give me negative 160 when I multiply. I'm going to get 20x squared minus 5x plus 32x minus 8. Go to 5 and an x. So I get 4x minus 1 plus, and it's 8 in common. So I have 4x minus 1. And these actually have a common factor of 4x minus 1. So 4x minus 1 is one of the factors, and 5x plus 8 is the other factor. Okay, again, you can check that by FOIL. Okay, so we have another part. I know there's so many parts to section P.5, but factoring is probably the most important section in the P chapter. We do a lot of factoring in this class. So go ahead and... Um, Get you to get ready for a part for the video. Before I move on, though, um, in class I will have a handout for more practice on trinomials. Now, if you're in my online class, I have a handout in Course Tools. Go to Document Sharing. And there is a handout called More Practice Trinomial Factoring. So it's only going to cover the last, um, this part of the video, um, this part of the video. More Practice um, Trinomial Factoring. And then I'll have a key up there also. So there'll be a blank um, <coughs> handout you can factor. That's my dog barking. So there's going to be a blank handout for you to practice factoring trinomial, and then there's going to be a key right underneath it. So please work on the handout um, because I feel like a lot of my students can use the practice for factoring trinomials. If you don't need it, you should go through that handout pretty quickly. And then you can go through the key. Um, if you're in my class um, or online, the key will also be located here and in here. Okay? Thank you, and I will get ready for part four.